How am I perceived? Is it the way that I talk? The way that I act? Or is it the vibe that I give off that determines your perception of me? Because I've heard lots. Honestly, it's been plenty. And maybe a little bit more that I could handle. But contrary to popular belief, I didn't grow up thinking that I had to act a certain way to succeed in this world. I was always told to keep my grades up and stay out of trouble. Never to go the extra mile or stand out. I think that that was part of the reason why I was so open-minded and free-spirited growing up. I never questioned how people perceived me. Unfortunately, I got a reality check, sooner rather than later, and it altered my public school experience. It made it very hard for me. Whether it was a kid cussing me out because I didn't want to show him my report card, or the constant taunting of my articulate tone of voice. I've struggled with this my entire academic career. But living in this world, a world in which I now understand more, I never once gave thought to having to Americanize myself. Yet I fit in perfectly to how they want us to be. For a good bit of time, I hated that. I hated that I was a statistic, a small portion of black people that can maintain stability in what is essentially a white man's world. Now, for a good point, of, for a good point in my life, I was very oblivious to how society viewed me. And this unmindful acquisition was blissful. And I subconsciously still wish that I possessed this. But in knowing what I know, that ignorance only got me so far. I've grown from past judgments and I've learned from them. And it's changed my way of looking at things. And I want that to change others. I'm currently enrolled in the International Baccalaureate program here at Eastside. I'm a junior now, and my, <laughs> and my experience has been a culture shock to say the least. I had no idea what I was getting myself into, honestly. I just thought magnet program looked great on college applications, and I gravitated towards IB because I was already zoned for Eastside. Now, my first day of school, my first week actually, but my first day of school was terrible. I hated it, I never wanna go back. I hate being a freshman, thank God. But it was terrible and I was sweaty. I didn't know where any of my classes were. I knew no one in those classes and of the people that I did know, my only friends were my sisters. But to top it off, I was probably one of seven black people in my grade level. One of 44 in the entire IB program. And for those of you who don't know the demographic here at Eastside, we have over 1,289 students. And of those students, we have 53% African American students. But in the IB program, we only have 9.8 African American students. 3% <laughs> of the entire school is black and in the IB program. Now, I didn't see this divide, or maybe I didn't want to see this divide, until I entered culinary. That's another program in which I'm enrolled here. And culinary had a good portion of black kids, white kids, a couple Asian and Indian, and I think that this personally saved me. Because growing up, I didn't experience a lot of mixed races coexisting together. I was naturally surrounded by black people because of my family and because of the schools that I went to. But in being part of these two, drastically different programs, I got to see what our school could accomplish if we were more integrated. Now, I'm technically in both major program and IB, so I got, to, I got an insight. I got to see how IB viewed major program and how major program viewed IB. I would hear the craziest things, the typical, but the main thing that stood out to me was that whenever we would come together for a school assembly or a fire drill, we were naturally separated. I thought that this was a problem. I thought it was a, a big issue because if this is the stepping stone, the ladder to adulthood and the inevitable accomplishments of our goals and dreams, then that ladder should be stable. It should have layers and steps that give us structure and individuality to aid our growing communities. And yes, yeah, society, society isn't stable, far from. And we can't force each other together, but that just goes to show that we can't force each other apart as well. Now from what I've gathered, 
in my 16 years in America is that it's really hard to shake someone's idea about you, right? Yet it's so easy for someone to come up with that idea. The question is, where did they get it? Society. And as corrupt as it is, it creates a bias heavily in the minds of the youth. And once we have it, it's really hard for us to let it go. Now, I myself, I wasn't, I wasn't as diverse growing up, you know, I was only surrounded by black people and I knew little of diversity. But yet I knew little of this and I still urged for a change. Who are we? We supposedly go to school to learn. And my main goal is to take away something from this experience because it's the trademark, the foundation to a world that I am slowly but surely entering. And I always get told by my mom that I should trust my heart and my instincts because they're gonna have my back throughout my entire life. My aunt says I'm only going to be educated, I mean I'm only gonna be successful if I'm educated and well-rounded. And my amazing and intelligent father lives by the fact that I am the conductor to whom I'm becoming. So yeah, I could just brush past these societal thoughts and dwell in my own melodramatic teenage individuality and just suck it up till graduation. But the wise don't rest for opportunities to gain knowledge. You can experience and you can learn the greatest lesson from the dumbest man because that one man could have more experience in his pinky than someone could have in their entire body. Experience is knowledge and knowledge is power. We are a nation and we should take in all that surrounds us, whether it be big or small, dumb or smart. And regardless of what anybody says, we should make it our own. Thank you.